Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get too far into the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button uh, or leaving a comment, those things help really help the channel get promoted. So thanks for that in advance. Um, today, uh, I have not yet on my channel done any bangle bracelets. So today I'm going to do three simple bangle bracelets. Uh, one with some stones in it, the other two uh, not so much. One's going to be kind of forged, one's going to be um, uh, soldered together and then uh, another one is going to be uh, braided so we'll see how those come out before we get started I needed to thank my newest patron Meredith for signing up thank you for that Meredith and thank all you other patrons who've been so supportive over the past year and happy new year to you all as well um, the other group I wanted to thank is my YouTube subscribers uh, we just passed 8200 I think and uh, that's great. I really appreciate all of the support, uh, especially the people who've been buying me coffees. That really helps out with the bills and uh, buying supplies for the channel. So thank you for that, as well as just thank you for the really nice things that you say in the comment section. Thanks for that as well. So, okay, let's get started on these three projects. Let's jump right into this. So this is my design idea book. These are available in my merch store if you're interested. I have found they improve my outcome when I draw things up in advance. I used to just sit down and start doing stuff, but... Ah! Okay. It helps me a lot because of these, the grid pattern on the back, because I'm not very good at uh, drawing things symmetrically, so... Alright, here's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm going to do three different uh, kind of bangle bracelets. There's a lot of different charts on the internet about what size a bangle should be. Um, most commonly, it seems like they're between about uh, two and a quarter inches to two and three quarter inches uh, diameter. Um, but there is some variation on that, and you can certainly make them for individual people. But uh, I would just look on a chart online and figure out uh, what size you want to make them. Uh, personally, for these ones, I'm going to make them uh, the 2.75, I think, at least for this first one. And the first one I'm going to do is just going to be a, uh, a very simple one, but it's going to be kind of forged a little bit. So I'm going to take a, a piece of 10 gauge square, solder it into a circle, and then um, once, it's, uh, once it's shaped nicely, I'm going to start flattening portions of it along the rim in both, in both directions. Uh, and we'll see how that turns out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> following that, I'm gonna bend it in some waves like that, and we'll see how that turns out. So, second one, I pre made some bezels uh, for some faceted stones, some little pink CZs, about five millimeters. I'm gonna connect them all together with a piece of 12 gauge square wire, and so I'll show you how to do that. I, if you want to see how to do the bezels, I have lots of videos where it shows me making bezels. So. But specifically for faceted stones, I'll put a link right there for you if you want to check that out. Um, third one, I'm going to braid three pieces of 20 gauge uh, round wire. And then we'll solder it into a ring and maybe flatten it out a little bit. And we'll see how that turns out. So to start with, though, we're going to use the um, 10 gauge square. So I've already cut a piece. I took the uh, 2.75 inches, which is about 70 millimeters, multiply it times pi to get the circumference, and I end up with about 219.8 uh, millimeters. So call it uh, 200, call it uh, 220 basically uh, millimeters, which is 22 centimeters, and that's about what this is cut to. So I'll need to flatten the ends of it with the file, and then we're gonna bring it back on itself and then solder it together to start with and then we'll do a little bit of foraging so that'll be our first first job here you could use your miter vice jig if you want to for this If you've never seen my videos before, I use uh, primarily hard silver sheet solder, spray-on flux called Mighty Flux, and uh, the torch that I use is a Smith Silversmith torch. It used to be called the Smith Handy Heat Torch, but it's an acetylene air torch, and 
I really like it. It's a good torch. So, sometimes <laughs> you can use a bracelet mandrel. You can use whatever you have that's around if you want to just get things started so you don't make too sharp of a bend. The thing about square wire though when you're bending it, you can see it's already trying to turn sideways on me here. This side's pushing out and this side's pushing in. Uh, so, and that's because it's trying to compress this bottom area and stretch this outer area and it's easier to go diagonally uh, if you're bending that way. So you need to correct that as you go. If you have some of those nylon pliers, those are kind of good for not marring things up. These ones are kind of beat up. I usually have my beginners use uh, a propane torch with one of those tanks on it, and those work pretty good for getting a, a shape started like this. I don't have to get it perfect on the, on the get-go here. I'm going to put the two ends straight towards each other anyway when I go to solder this closed. When you do line these up, you want to make sure you push them past each other a, a little bit so that when you pull them back and pop them into place, they're pushing together with some tension. You have a lot better luck soldering it closed than if you do that. The trick will be to get it lined up nicely. Pretty good. So I'm just going to lay it on its side here. You really need to get the whole thing hot, uh, as always. And if you're using one of those little butane torches, you may struggle to get something this much mass up to temperature. You probably can get by with this, but I don't know. I haven't played with one of those for a while. I do remember having one a long time ago that didn't produce as much heat as I would like. Another thing I do that a lot of people don't do is I use pick soldering uh, quite a bit. Pick soldering is where you pick up a little bit of solder on the end of your pick and melt it on there. And you heat the piece to the point where the solder will jump onto it and just touch it. And it should just flow right on if you have the thing up to the right temperature. And so if you're interested in that, I'll put a link there right there for you. That's a super useful skill. I would highly recommend learning that. You could also just lay a piece of solder across there if you prefer. before I, I quench it the rest of the way. If you don't have one of those nylon pliers, you can use these. You just got to be a little careful not to ding it up too much. If you're doing it, use use the, the plier mostly to hold the metal and use your hands to bend with. Or use it just for leverage, you know. I can always use my rotary tool to remove any kind of residual tool marks that I've left. Hopefully not too many. Some people use an aluminum baseball bat as a, as a bracelet mandrel. It's pretty close to 70, uh, 70 millimeters. So I think what I can do if I, if I wanted to, pick a line there, and it'll help me to get it perfectly uh, shaped because it's got perfect concentric circles there. What I would do is I'd look at the one that was closest to the inside of this, the, the ring, and then use that as a guide, see how far apart, if you kind of center it around it, where's the parts that dip in closer than other parts, 
like I have a, a bit right here that dips in a little bit so that is not perfect but it's pretty close so I'll do a little cleanup with the file here where the solder joint is I wanted to kind of have a random look but I'm going to it's like 0 to 60 right here and then 60, 90, 120, right there. And go 30, 60, 90, 120, like that. Yeah, that gives us thirds. So now I'm thinking, if I want it to look sort of randomy, I'm going to flatten out some areas every third here, like this way. And then I might go fourths as far as where I make the waves in it. We'll see how that looks. I'm going to use my little chasing hammer here. I'm just going to kind of flatten it. Okay, so all that pounding that we've been doing has been seriously making this hard because whenever you pound on silver, and most metals actually, it does what's called work hard and that makes the metal much harder to bend because it's doing something about the organization of the molecules inside of the piece so if we want that to be soft and malleable again so we can adjust it in the other dimension we're going to go ahead and heat it up to the point where it's almost a reddish color and then let it cool off let that cool for a few minutes Okay, so I split this into thirds to pound it uh, flat in those third areas, but let's put one of those at the top here. At the center of that one right there. And then instead of doing um, thirds, just to make it offset from each other, let's do fourths. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to bend it wavy from the side, if that makes any sense. So wherever these marks are, I'll try and do it on the wave there. And then I'll on this one go the opposite direction. Personally, I think it'll look better if I make these uh, curves nice and smooth. So it's just like kind of like a sound wave or something. It doesn't have to be hugely wavy, just a little wavy. Let's put that in the pickle. Maybe we'll work on the second one. Okay, let's start on our next one. So, for the second one, I think I'm going to do the bezel set uh, stones. Let me show you these here. Like I said, I pre made these little bezels that are going to go like this. These are the CZs. They're nice sparkly CZs. So um, I'm going to set the stones to the side for now. And I cut a piece of this 12 gauge square wire to about the right proportions. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut um, three more of those off of the 12 gauge. And make sure they're all the same length. And then we'll file the ends flat. And I'm, I think I'm going to solder these together while it's lying flat and then curve it. So we'll see how that turns out. So let me straighten this out and we'll use this as a guide to cut some more pieces. So since we're going to be butting these up against the side of a bezel, I'm going to give them just a slight cup. Um, and you can use your half round file if you got one of those just give it a little bit of an indent in the middle. So 
not going to require very much. A little tiny bit. So do that on all of them, on both sides. Make sure you, you can use your rotary tool if you want to. Basically just going to do that with all four of them. So are we going to need five of those? No, that should be right. OK. So I'm just going to round out these other ones too. Be right back. When you start to get a piece that's as spread out as this is, uh, it gets harder and harder to get the whole thing up to the temperature you need it to be. So you got to keep the heat moving all the time. I'm going to pick solder a little bit at the end of each of these, but I still have to flux them. I'm probably going to have to line up two solder pads in order to get that last one on, since it's, it's going to be a little bit long for, for my soldering pad. It seems counterintuitive that you got to heat this part over here when you're just trying to solder the part on my side over here. However, it is important. Okay, so now we need to bend these around so that I can bring this other end together. These are called magnesia blocks and they're a little bit softer surface. So I should be able to push these in the bezels a little bit so nothing falls off. So I'm going to put a little bit of downward pressure on those. Be able to just pick that right there. Let me make sure I have some solder. I was kind of getting scarce of the last one there. Let's 
it's useful to have a soft pad like this because it allows you to push some things into it so they don't drop off on you. plane so nothing is wobbly and weird looking. Last one I want it to be wobbly, this one I want it to be straight. The bezels by the pulling on the sides of them got a little bit distorted. You can usually kind of straighten those back out manually. Once I have it reshaped like this I'm just going to let it pickle and then I'll be setting the stones and polishing and then I'll show you the, the result of this one at the end with the other two. But before we do that, once this one's pickling, then we'll start on the last one. The last one we're going to do a six wire weave, where you're weaving two together on each side. And I've cut myself some pieces of 20 gauge round wire, six to be precise. And I've taped the ends together with some masking tape, um, so that they're laying flat right next to each other. Now you can use a number of things to hold this in place. You could use a pair of vice grips to clamp these down so they can't move. Technically you could solder the ends together if you wanted to before you did this. Um, you can use a shop clamp like this, which I've used a lot of times for weaving uh, and braiding stuff. And I think though it always works best if you have a flat surface to do it on. So I grabbed this piece of oak that I have here. I thought I'd clamp it to this and see how that went this time. I've never done this exactly this way, but it seems like it probably worked pretty well. I cut these to be 16 inches long because I honestly don't know uh, how long they need to be to equate to the, I guess that's 22 centimeters-ish. So to start with though, I'm going to take the two outer ones like this and them out this way. Separate the two outer ones on the other side to the other side. And then I'm going to take this one and put it over that, the middle one like that. I'm going to pull the center one off to the side over here and this other one will be in the middle. center one I need to go back. It's getting caught on my microphone. <laughs> I didn't plan for that, Chad. <laughs> uh, to get this started, it always comes, it looks a little rough at first when you're getting it started, so I think it's easiest if you do it one wire at a time. Pull this one over here, push that down a little flat. The second one so it stays right next to it. Pull this one that way. You want to make sure that the wires don't cross each other when you're braiding it. Basically. There's nothing too fancy about braiding silver other than keeping it as flat as you can when you're doing it. If you start doing it, you'll come up with it. I haven't done this for a long time, so I don't have my system down very neat right, right yet. After I do a few of these, it'll start to come start to look neater, I think. Hopefully, as the wires get shorter, they'll quit catching on everything around me. <laughs> I 
I used to try to do this uh, kind of stuff in the living room when I was watching TV or something, but if you have cats, it's a, it's a, uh, it's kind of a deal breaker for this. Because they see these little flopping ends of wire and they get so happy. <laughs> I think, you know, we're going to do some, some stuff to this after it's all woven. Um, to make it more consistent. But even though while you're doing this, you want to try and keep everything as, as consistent as you can. So once you develop your groove that you got going, stick with it. starts to get too far away from the, the, the clip that I have holding it on here, I can also move the clip up or move the piece back so this is sticking out the back. Okay, I'm going to move the clamp up a little bit. I'll move this back a little bit. You could do um, some other variations of this too. You could mix it up with some twisted wire and some plain wire. I've seen those before. Just do two thinner wires twisted together to make one about the same thickness as the, the other wire you're mixing in, mixing it, mixing it in with. My words aren't working today. Um, or you could do mixed metals. I've seen that before. That looks nice. I'm probably going to do the rest off camera since you don't need to watch me do the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, I'll be right back when I'm done. So, I've gotten it woven the whole length here, and this is going to be a lot longer than I really need. Especially once I stretch it out a little bit, because I'm, I'm going to use the um, plastic hammer to kind of shape it a little bit. So. Once we do that, we'll pick out the best part of it, the part that's most consistent, I think, and we'll use that for the bangle. I think let's start by just kind of tapping it sideways. See, as you do this, the more you do it, it, it ends up starting to look more and more symmetrical. When you first start doing it, they're kind of loose. Okay, you can probably work with that. Let's see. So we needed uh, needed to be about 20. Two centimeters long. We can easily get that out of here. Kind of probably going to take it out of the part that looks the nicest to me. So if you like. I had reasonably good consistency this time, which is surprising since I haven't done this kind of stuff for a long time. Twenty-two. I'm going to give myself a little margin for error in case I need to cut some off.
think I want this side to be out. So I want to get those lined up nicely as I can. Actually, I got lucky on the cut. It actually is pretty close. I want these not to move though when the metal starts to relax as it starts to anneal. Uh, but let's cut a little bit of solder. I'm going to pick some right down there and hopefully we can get all those soldered together. In spite of just soldering this one spot, we're going to heat the entire piece up. That's one of those counterintuitive things about silversmithing. It takes a while for people to, to have gel in their mind. I think we're probably good, but let's cool it off and tug on it a little bit and see how it feels. This is going to be a little more uh, squishy again because we uh, annealed it when we were soldering it closed a little bit. So if you want it to get stiffer again, you can bend it back and forth or pound on it some more. All those things will make it a little stiffer. Okay, well, I'm going to let this pickle for a while, then I'll polish it, and I'll show you all three at the end. So, stay tuned. <laughs>my three three bracelets here's the forged one I think that one came out nice here's the one with the little uh, cubic zirconias in it and this one I still need to go back with the Dremel and smooth out the tops of these bezels just a little bit and then finally here's the woven one excuse me the braided one sort of partial to this one more than I thought. Uh, it came out to be a really nice symmetrical kind of braid. The join isn't very uh, easy to find. It's actually right there, so it's relatively um, difficult to see. But overall, I kind of like it, yeah. Those are this one, Ooh. this one, and then I didn't draw that one. <laughs> I have a hard time drawing braids for some reason, but okay, well, I'll take some better pictures and put those at the end. Well, that was the three bangle bracelet uh, video. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, and before you leave, make sure to visit my um, playlist page. That's where I have uh, different playlists with uh, all of the 260 or so videos that I have on my channel 
split into um, subcategories. So if you're looking for beginner videos, uh, you can find a beginner video list. If you're looking for videos just about prong settings, uh, there's a list for that. Uh, so check those out. Uh, you'll find that I have lots of content here that's uh, pretty accessible. And so you might consider giving me a subscribe. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. In addition to that, before you leave, you might want to check out the video description. Uh, there's important links down below here where you can visit my website if you want to buy some jewelry, which you may have watched me make on the channel here. Uh, there's a link to my Buy Me a Coffee page if you want to give me a little tip to help out with supplies. I appreciate those things. Uh, there's a link to my merch store if you want to get one of those nice design idea books that I showed you at the beginning uh, or some other merch. And finally, there's my Patreon page, which is where um, you can support the channel in a whole different way. So. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you coming to visit and taking the time. Uh, take care. Happy silversmithing.